heading off now to train a pull session and I'm gonna take the time uh, the duration of the of the pull session to cover one thing and it's how I brought up my back because a lot of people don't realize how important mind to muscle connection is when you want to bring up your back the, between pulling through the elbows and knowing how to contract different parts of your back if you want to hit the upper part where the traps are or you want to hit the lower part where the lats are and just your overall back I'm not sure how long the workout's going to be but it's going to start now in two seconds and I'm just going to commentate over it. Right, I'm going to get straight into it lads because this workout footage is not too long. I just recorded the back portion of the pull session. But anyway, I'm going to get straight into two things that when I start incorporating into my back sessions or just start putting my focus towards when it was back day or pull day that really just worked on my whole back development brought it up more than I could possibly imagine they both come hand in hand but I'm gonna get straight into it the first thing is why I believe you should work on back thickness over back width and the second thing is why I believe muscle or mind to muscle connection and working on your form is so important on the back and um, as I said these two do come hand in hand and experienced lifters there is no way you can disagree with this but um First off is why I believe you should work on the back thickness over the back width because the back thickness lads is the majority of your back. It's like working on the chest, imagine someone just went in and done decline cables and just worked the outer part of their chest. The inner portion of the chest, well there is no inner portion but the thickness of the chest and the actual chest muscle wouldn't be very big and thick if that makes sense. The bigger the muscle is the better your mind to muscle connection is. Anyone who's lifting a few years will know that that's 100% true. The bigger the muscle is, the more you can recruit it throughout movements that might not be necessarily an isolation movement, but you can sort of turn it into an isolation movement if your mind to muscle connection is strong enough. That's why I believe working on the back thickness is a hell of a lot more important than working on the back width because the majority of your back muscle is the, is the muscles that make up the thickness of your back. And the thicker your, your back is, the bigger your overall back muscle is. Hence, your mind to muscle connection with your back muscle will be 10 times stronger if you emphasize the thickness of your back. That will carry over to the width, or the width of your back if you're doing any vertical movements like pullovers like these. I know they're not necessarily a vertical movement, but lap pull downs, pull ups. When you go back to those movements, you'll feel that it will just be nailing your back, your arms, your biceps will not be involved anymore. Uh, the contractions of your back will be a hell of a lot better you probably if you look back over the power bulk series you'll notice that most of my back workouts orientated around the thickness of the back now I'm starting to incorporate a lot more vertical pulls and it feels 50 times better so what I want you to do now if you just go away from this video or anything is to emphasize your back workouts around the thickness of the back trust me it will carry over to the width of your back the mind muscle connection will be 10 times better just finished up that session there after i finished i trained abs and done 20 minutes of cardio i hit biceps i done like two or three exercises on biceps nothing too heavy i just went for a pump because i trained arms and shoulders alone a day or two ago i was thinking of training abs every single day before i go just to tighten them up a little bit because i only realized that i've, I've neglected abs a lot on this cut and that's usually not something i do usually i train abs very frequent on a cut but anyway i'm nearly home now I've been procrastinating on one thing for the last three weeks, I'd say. You're probably asking what that is, and that is to clean this fucking... day or two I dropped carbs just a little bit and um, you can see a noticeable difference in the abs already
Dropping the carbs wasn't purposely, but I just ended up having a lower carb intake and just ended up having a higher protein intake, which I'm not going to complain with. The workouts were still not taxed. I still felt alright, so I'm going to keep the carbs low, probably for another two days or so. See how I feel. If the workouts are hindering, then I'll just up the carbs again. Calories are still staying the same. Right, it's coming up on 8 o'clock and the hunger is getting the better of me, if I'm being honest. I've already dialed in what I'm going to eat. Of My macros are on point. Protein is a little high, as I was saying earlier on. But um, I did have a bit more room to play with stuff, so... The staple meal that I showed you was, I think it was yesterday or the day before, with the chicken and the two minute rice. I had enough room to fit in three wraps. So what I did was I still use the curry sauce and stuff like that. But um, I made three curry wraps, chicken curry wraps with the rice on those wraps as well. And I'm still left over with a little bit of rice and chicken even after eating those three wraps. So it's going to be a big meal. It'll probably hold me off for the rest of the night. I doubt I'll be going to bed hungry. I know it's still early-ish, but I'm just going to take the hit. If I go to bed starving, I go to bed starving. I'm just too hungry now. Plus, it's a big-ass meal, so I'm just counting on it.